Welcome to the final of Players' Championship 7 and two likely protagonists will go toe-to-toe -to -toe now in a best okay, of 15 match to see who's going to get their first title of 2024. It's been an 18-month wait for Josh Rock to see if he can get his second PDC Outside. title. As for Chris Dorby, he has got two of these in the bank from previous times. 25. He would like his third and to go one better than the Players' Championship Chris earlier this season where he was done by Damon Hetter. Dobie has the darts after what has been a rather remarkable day. Now there's only one more thing to do. Get the title. I'm Paul the Asset Nicholson. This is Chris Murphy. And this is the last game of the day and it may just be the best. Yeah, Dobie's best came in that sensational semi-final. Where he produced a spectacular performance to see off Ross Smith. An average of 109.63. The second highest on record for Chris Doby. That's how good that 58. was. Pretty special. But it had followed a 106.71 just a couple of games earlier against Kim Hybrex as well. 180. Josh Rock, on the other hand, well, he really did a demolition job on Luke Woodhouse, who he beat by the same 7-3 scoreline. It's first to eight in this final, and the 180 accounts have already been opened by both players. They're just setting the tone for what we're going to see over the next 20 minutes. It might take a little bit less than that, judging by the pace of this game. Funnily enough, when Dobie hit a magnificent 170 finish against the Decker earlier, it was 41 that was missed by the Decker to take him out. And that was in round two. 21. So by that token, 46 is just a little bit easier than 170. But then again, he's hitting most of the things he goes for today. 14. Doesn't hit that, so Rook gets an early opportunity. And he'd be well advised to take Game it. Shot. He does take it. Rock breaks in the opening leg of the final. Chris Doby has never beaten. 57. Josh the pair of them have only met twice before. Both of those came last year, but both on big stages. The Belgian Darts Open and the Grand Slam of Darts. And despite an average of 104.39 on the European Tour, Doby could not crack rock. 140. He's been in eight finals in his PDC career, has Chris. Winning three of them, but... Three wins have come in his last four finals. It took him a little bit of time to get used to the position of success. He was up against the likes of Whitlock, 100. Van Gerwen, Chisnell and Ratajski until he got that first win, which was back in 2021, beating Jose de Souza by eight legs to seven. And when he won that tournament, he was relieved to get over the line for the first time. And now he's got this thing going with Riggs, 60. with Dozer, and with Ryan Joyce as to who is going to have the more, most titles in that 100. band of brothers from the northeast of England. Well, I can tell you this, if Doby wins this, he equalises Rids on three in players' championships, 100. but will overtake Rids in total titles, and will be better off than Durant. 80 and Joyce when it comes to these particular titles as well. Well, can he get level in this one? 19. A double 16, which he missed a couple of Game darts shot. at in the first leg, but he puts that right with a fine finish, Chris Doby. There's an interesting point that Paul was making there because it's kind of been an opposite scenario for Josh Rock in terms of finals. He won his second, but has been... 100. In five further finals since and lost a lot. Got a win against Luke Humphreys in 2022, 100. but has since lost four players' championship finals and a Euro Tour final. Well, look on the bright side. He's up against someone who isn't from Wales. Yeah, some of those defeats coming against Welshman, Johnny Clayton twice and Gerwin Price. 
most recent defeat was against Gary Anderson towards the back end of last 100. year did in between all that I should just caveat the point that he won the World Youth Championship final in 2022 as well 134 someone who there's been a big noise about a couple more titles wouldn't go amiss I was saying earlier Murph that I believe he's benefiting from less column inches about him because they're all about Littler at the minute and if he wins today he's saying to the world I'm still here well, he had that 1 6 1 checkout hit against him in the semi final by Luke Woodhouse, but he can't repeat that feat. And Dobie can lead if he can find double four. Didn't like the dart double eight, did he? Oh, 66. And he won't like that one either. Well, sometimes when he goes from eights to fours, his body position is just a little bit closed. He had to reset there. Game Here's shot. the price for the two misses. Oh, Well, I don't know what's happened here. Chris Doby has disappeared. I think there's a noise because I think he heard, I think Josh Rock said, I heard it as well. So I think there's some noise that both players have heard and the referee Owen Binks has rightly gone to investigate and make sure that whoever or whatever is making that noise stops making the noise. Absolutely. There are two competitive players left in the building. Give them the respect they deserve. Whoever's no. left in the place. <laughs> you've got to have the best of order. These are very quiet atmospheres when there's only two players left. If you're walking around the place, you've got to do so with respect. So, they're just playing some practice darts while that gets investigated. Just to put you in the picture, in the game, every leg so far has been won against the throw, so Josh Rock is leading it 2-1. And Chris Dobie had a fine finish in the middle, the 108, to break back, but then that good work was undone. What can be pointed out, Paul, is that Dobie has missed multiple darts at double in the two legs that he lost. Yeah, that can be really costly, but almost so far into the game we can talk about it but as a player you will forget about it it's all about winning the moment that is in front of you and that's exactly what Chris has got to find right now so the referee Owen Binks just returns to get the game back underway and we will rejoin it exactly where it was at the start of the fourth leg 140 in moments like that because sometimes there are disruptions and it doesn't have to be finals it can just be any match you just got to keep your focus stay loose and then get back on it yeah i am told it was machine rather than man so we won't uh, berate anybody in no, that 50 I'm, I'm blaming the pesky machines machines can have respect too 140 Sometimes you've got to throw respect out the window if you want a title. Such a lovely pace about this game. 132. Both getting on with it. And judging by some of the games that we've seen from these guys today, they're very comfortable with playing someone who is at the same pace as they are. Yeah, and that's a pretty snappy pace, isn't it? The, the rhythm of the throw is not rapid. It's 64. fast enough, but not rapid. But the approach from both players to the hockey they really do like to get there as soon as their opponent has got to the board to retrieve their darts this shouldn't be an accident that Chris is in the final as well 45. he's in the top six of the averages he's played a lot of games before today he had 22 matches 86 but he was skirting being 3-1 down there and is needing another ton plus check out just to stay in with a chance of 2-2, which is not going to go. Yeah, needed to find 55. at least a 25 with the first dart for that equation. So Rock can Game shot. open up a bit of a buffer here and does that with the first hold of throw in this tight. Great first dart from Doby. Great second dart from Doby. Clatters into them with the third. 
Just a couple of points between them in the averages for the day. 100. Rock, 97.26 coming into this. Dolby, 99.23. How many times have we said that someone is ahead 60. of the other player before the final starts? And then it's the person who didn't have the more impressive numbers gets the win. 140. It's almost as if everything else the rest of the day is completely pointless. When you draw a line under the semi-finals and it's just one more match. If Chris was to win, I, I don't envisage a better Players' Championship winning day considering what he's been through, but Josh Rock wants 60. to stop him. He wants to have this, and I, I know it's called a drought because it's been 18 months, but for someone of his talent and all of the finals he's been in since, 140. he just wants to put that to rest. He wants to get back on some sort of winning momentum. 41. Toby has work to do, that's for sure, to win this match, but he can start that work here. Game shot. And Tops is found. And again, no sooner has he retrieved that leg-winning dart than Rock is at the hockey. 100. Rattling in a ton. Just been checking Chris's finals in PDC darts. He's never played someone twice in a final. 57. He's had nine different opponents. In this day and age, that's quite rare. 100. Yeah, although it's getting less the case, isn't it, recently? We mentioned at the start of this final that 58. get a new winner again. We've got Chris Toby, the second final of the year, Josh Rock in his first, but... Toby did lose that final to Damon Hetter, so whatever the outcome, at the end of seven players' 100. championship events, we'll have seven different winners. A couple of years ago, that would have been quite rare. Absolutely. Usually this time of the year, if you 95. go back to 2016, 2017, Van Gerwen's probably won three or four by now. But we're in very different times. Chris does not want to do what Ryan Searle has already done this year, which is lose two finals. However... After losing two finals, he went on to win one. Yeah, and they were all consecutive. Incredible run of form from Heavy Metal. But Dobie here is taking aim at tops for the second straight leg. This time he misses it, but Get does shot. recover on double ten. And that dart effectively gives him the bat on back. The game's back on throw, and he has the darts when it's all square after six. That's the beautiful thing about best of 15. You've just got a bit more time to get into gear. As long as you can stay with your opponent after six legs, you're in the final now. And then with a tremendous shot, especially when you've got the darts. At this point of a final, if you're averaging 101, you're thinking, I have the capabilities and I have the energy to win this. Not necessarily by an odd leg, but maybe by two or three. But what would be interesting is if you were to ask both players right now, Would they accept a last leg shootout? I'm not sure what they'd say. 100. They're performing at a similar standard, so they probably, whether they accept it or not is one thing, whether they expect it or not is another, and I think they probably would. 91. I think you've always got to expect it, considering your company. It's, it's not as if Dolby is playing someone who's playing their first final. Josh is very, very well versed in this. 44. Well, can Rock play a starring role here with the 170? That's the perfect dart. 100. He'd be a little annoyed not to have found a bedfellow there. If that had gone, Chris is probably thinking, well, that's karma, considering what I did to Mike the Decker earlier. Double double downstairs. 56. Rock has a chance to immediately break back. Two eights. Two fours. 62. Cannot force his way back ahead. So Doby this time breathing the sigh of relief and looking to lead this darts match for the first time. Game shot. Double ten's been rather good for him the last couple of legs. He does lead for the first time. 
60. I mentioned earlier that Chris Dobie has won three of his last four finals. Josh has lost a streak of finals that you mentioned. 57. Just how much of a mental battle is this for Josh now? Because when you have been to multiple finals in a row and not got the job done, what goes through the grey matter between the ears? I suppose it'd be how much you think about it. There are 95. players who often make reference to it, particularly big finals, but I don't think Rock has got that. It's not like he hasn't won one, is it? Yeah, maybe he hasn't won one for a while, but I don't think it's a long enough list of final defeats for it to bother him just yet. 99. Let us ask that question again tomorrow, if indeed it's needed. It may not be needed. 90. If they're going to follow each other leg for leg, it may just be that last leg decider 60. that we thought might happen. I don't know what happened there. A little exchange between the players again. Well, there was a little laugh from Josh when the treble seven was hit. Game shot. Nothing nasty at all, but obviously something happened down there. Did you mean that or did you hear that or something like that was said? But you certainly meant that and Josh Rock will have heard the call of 180. That's Chris Doby who has hit a nine data today, one of three, along with Daryl Gurney. Steve Beaton kicks off this leg in perfect fashion. Oh, come on. Seriously? If he gets a second, he might run around this place like Alan Shearer. 180. Josh Rock chucks a 180 in for good measure. Can Doby do it again? Not quite. I just was about to come back to your point from earlier, Paul Nicholson. 109. And it could well be a 10 dart leg. That This could be up there with the best ever winning runs. Had he got two nine darters in it, it would have to be right at the top. That would be close. For a ten, he'll take a four visit leg. Game shot. That's what he gets. At this portion of his semi final, he was flying. And he got a ten darter against Ross Smith. And ultimately, 96. Ross, who fought so valiantly, just wasn't able to keep up with Dolby's scoring power and his ability to finish. You wonder if this portion of the final 45. is going to see Dolby stretch again. Very tidy finishing without being too spectacular. You may have spotted Dolby in the background just having a little word with himself after that brilliant leg to go only kick off 45 as frustrated the former Masters champ. Right, do you just want to put 40. another element of respect on Chris Dolby's name? Because let's not forget how last year ended for Dolby to be doing hey, this what? kind of thing after what was the worst comeback defeat. He was on the wrong end of it. Four 60. sets up against Rob Cross in a World Championship quarter-final, a win that many think would have got him in the Premier League as well. Absolutely. And that was the first day of the year. 49. Talk about your calendar year starting with the wrong sort of emotional trauma. But I think what we're learning about Chris is just how mentally strong he is. Yeah, he wants to get back there, put that right, go even further. 130. Do a lot of damage in the meantime. Big, big exchange, this. 25, possibly. Well, okay. Look at the bright side. You've got a shot. 51. Almost gets it. The difference between 6 4 in a race to 8 and 5 apiece is enormous. Doby's missed his chance 21. for 6 4, but now Rock has missed his opportunity for 5 apiece. This game is all about opportunities. Chris has been given a second one, which game he shot. takes. Two more legs, and he's back in the winner's circle. Two up, two away, throwing first. Chris Doby now has a strong grip on this game. 
And he looks for a third Pro Tour title, a fourth in PDC darts, going with that Masters crown that he picked up to force himself into the Premier League in the previous year. And he was a great Premier League player. One on the very first night, days after winning the Masters. There were lots of people who were thinking that Josh Rock was going to be included in that Premier League. 100. Going into that World Championship beforehand. Can you imagine what it would be like if Josh Rock was to walk out in Belfast? The place where Chris Doby won his Premier League night that first week. And in the quiet... 100. The Players' Championship tournament is Chris Doby who's letting his darts do the talking. He's edging closer to another win. Double 11. 102. And Rock needs something enormous here. It's got to be solid as a rock. And it isn't. 29. This is one of those I don't want any faffing shots. Odd number doubles can be pesky. This time he changes his body position for double four. 18. Same result. However, Rock did make a little bit of a mess in that previous visit, so he's still got a huge one. Treble 15 would have left tops. Instead, Doby returns for double two. And look at the anguish there from Josh Rock. He knows how big this leg is. And he's probably thinking, why on earth didn't I get more in the previous 83. turn? So double two to move within one. Won't be the easiest dart to navigate for Chris Doby, but he does it expertly. No trouble at all. And now Josh Rock is in the perilous position of having to win four successive legs. Considering some of the positions he's been in today, double two shots like that are just as important as 170s to win matches. Treat them all with the same respect. 123. You don't have to have 109 to win every match. 42. But what we know about this level is that you must be mid-90s and higher to remain with your opponent and ask questions of them. Win, win the big moments, and that's what Chris Doby's done. 180. And he started the other way, didn't it? It looked at the start of this match that it might be Josh Rock who would win the big moments when he punished Doby for missed doubles, but 180. the 6-180s from Hollywood have helped him just get a real grip of the final. Well, well, when he got 180 number six, he's thinking, I've got rid of you now, but then... 174. You've got nine perfect darts in this leg. There were 10, 100. but now the final could be finished in 10. Double six. And Game shot Dobie and does it. Chris Dobie. Chris Dobie is the champion at Players' Championship 7. He defeats Josh Rock in the final. And Dobie picks up his third Pro Tour title. An absolutely stunning run, including that fabulous semi-final performance when he did average over 109 against Ross Smith. But then, an 8-4 win against Josh Rock takes Dobie to the title, and it's a win that could do an awful lot for his 2024. Stand on the end of the ocket. Josh Rock beaten, good run for him. Doby wins it 8-4. There you can see the tail of the tape. A 108 check go. out, 100 Chris average Doby. almost. Let's hear from what the winner now. day you have had. You have ticked off just your second ever professional line data. One of your highest ever averages on record. And you managed to win a game with a 170 checkout after Mike Decker was on a nine data in a deciding leg, and then you've gone and taken the title. And yet you've done it all, and you're not feeling particularly great. Nah. Honestly, yeah, it, it's, it's all right for someone that hasn't won nothing, isn't it? So, <laughs> remember that one. <laughs> no, mate, honestly, I, I came here, didn't feel great at all. Uh, first game, obviously, against Vincent, it was a struggle. And I've just plodded on, mate. I've, I've just got on with it, not whinged, and yeah. I'm the winner. Because you've got a cold, right? That's basically Yeah, it. it's just a head cold. Um, obviously, it's been going on. I think Ross, Ross Smith had it a few weeks ago, and he's probably given us it, you know? So, nah, I've just plodded on, and, and 
Here we are. Where does this rate? Obviously, you won the Masters. That's absolutely enormous. You've gone on big runs in, in massive TV events. But the way that your game has come out today with the nine, the finish against the Decker, the title, the massive average against Ross Smith, this has got to be right up there in one of your best days in the game, hasn't it? Yeah, consistently I played well, obviously after the first game. The game against Kim, um, I played brilliant. I felt like I couldn't miss against Kim. and He, he played, he pushed us all the way. He played fantastic. and Yeah, it's, it's just one of those performances where, like I said, I've just plodded on, not whinged, just got on with it. and. Hey, I'm here now talking to you, so I'm, I'm delighted to, to come out the winner. Could be a big one as well. Not only the title, but £15,000. That puts you right on the brink of that top 16 in the Pro Tour list. And that that's important for things like European Tours going in as a seeded player, which is obviously, you know, you want that Pro Tour ranking to reflect your world ranking, which is in the top 16. Yeah, it's massive. Um, being seeded for the Euro Tours is something, obviously, I've had the chance to do that a couple of times, but I never cut, kept my spot. So to, to push on towards them, I think... Uh, Obviously, being in the top 16 in the world, you, I think you should be in the season, you know. Um, but I quite, haven't quite done that on the floor. Last year on the floor events, so it was terrible. And, and, and I admitted it um, after the Premier League, I was coming in hot. It was hard to get up for these kind of events. But this year, um, that was my main aim, to, to start doing well on the floor again. And it's my second final of the year, and I'm happy to get that win. What's the difference like? Because obviously, you know, you're a player who's been on the tour for a number of years. And yes, we see you in some of the big TV events, but last year you were in the Premier League. So you're getting that big stage action in front of massive crowds every Thursday and you had to try and juggle this. This year, you're back focusing primarily on your Pro Tour stuff and then we'll wait for things like the match play and stuff like that. Does it change your game? Does it change... Do you find it easier, harder being in the Premier League compared to not? Um, obviously, I thought it was harder because... We, we're travelling a lot in the Premier League and um, coming here, trying to get up for it, it, it was hard and, and I've admitted that in the past and now I haven't got, I've got that freedom of not being in the Premier League, coming here and this is what I should be doing and you, you want to pick your floor game up and I, I gave myself one test, one task to do this year and, and that was to raise my floor game and um, I think I've done that uh, obviously playing well, I'm, I'm going into games confident as well so that, that always helps confidence. If you're confident, then you can go a long way. Your first couple of floor titles, you won, what, 2021 that you picked them up. Um, you picked her up in a year. What's the target for this year then? I mean, you've got one, but I mean, is it, it, it? does this need to be your best year, do you feel? You are growing as a player and you need to underline that with titles? Yeah, well, I, I just said to myself, I, I finally got into that top 16 after the World Championships. It then aims to stay there now. You, do, you don't want to... You've, you've done the hard work, you know. Uh, oh, sorry, you've done the easy work. It's the hard work is to staying in there. And, and now dedication is, is key and I've got to put myself down and just lock myself away and, and put that practice in. And it's it's paid off, like I said. I, have, I haven't done as much practice as what I should have, but my game's there and I, I feel I'm good enough to compete again. And it just start off by winning, winning titles on the floor and I'm happy to be back in that winner circle. Is it just a case of hard work? Because, I mean, there's a number of players we've spoken to over the last few weeks who, who've won titles and they've been doing different things. They've been working with psychologists or they've been trying to change how they think or approach the game. Is it you You feel you've got the recipe down? It's just about putting the hours in to make sure you're ready for events. Yeah, of course. I, I said to my manager there a few weeks ago um, when I lost in the Pro Tours to Willie O'Connor, 5-2 up. Uh, I lost the Euro Tour, 5-3 up against Danny Knobbett. And I was thinking... Do I actually need to go and see a psychologist? You know, um, trying to close a game out was was becoming uh, becoming a struggle for me, and I just kind of just brushed that aside. And um, I just I thought I don't need to, to do that. I think my mindset should be better than any. And I kind of went home, worked on that, and um, yeah, I, I didn't need to, to go through that. Um. Then go down that route. Has Things have changed in this sport over the last few months. Oh, Luke Littler's arrival and that story and the way that he's got a load more attention, that has changed a lot of stuff. The amount of people paying attention to the sport, the coverage of it. It's changed some darts players' approach, I think. Has it changed anything for you? Because obviously you're the same sort of stable, so yeah. you're, you see it up close and personal. Well, that's it. I'm number three in the stable now, so <laughs> of course. Uh, hey, fair play to them too in the Premier League. You always keep an eye on them, but... 
I don't want to be the spare part, you know. I, I want to be joining them lads. And like I said, I, I'm working my backside off to try and be amongst them. And and hopefully I can keep doing this, producing it, doing well in the majors. And uh, I might get my uh, chance again. So ho hopefully um, I think that little bit rivalry has kicked me on and I want to be, I want to be where them guys are. Well, a sensational day today. Chris Doby, our champion, our seventh different winner from seven Players' Championship events. We'll be back here tomorrow in Leicester for Players' Championship, eh? Feeling up to that one, Dobes? Of course, always. Of course, always. <laughs> Doesn't matter if he's under the weather, he's on top today in Leicester. Cheers, man. Thank you very much. Cheers, well, man. Super.